You're listening to Soap Sound Radio. We bring you streaming and live broadcasting from the capital. This is the El Arpa Podcast. It's Christmas. Welcome to the New El Arpa Podcast. Joining me, of course, is Maria. How are you? Very well, thank you. Are you in the festive spirit? I'm always in the festive spirit. Even in July? Even in July. Wow, fantastic. That's a serious commitment to the Christmas living. So today is a new day, a new podcast, and we went to... Well, where do we go? We went to the Christmas International Fair at Conde Duque. Yes, we certainly did, and it was a spectacle for the feast. A spectacle for the feast. A feast for the senses. <laughs> That's right, mates. Um, bamboozled enough. by all the Christmas cheer in the air. Uh, so basically, yeah, it was a food market uh, with places, well, stalls uh, showing off food and wares and clothes and everything from around the world. Um, and we went there today. Uh, so did you learn anything in, in particular? No, we learned lots of things because um, they were panels that explained how they celebrate Christmas in countries all over the world and well a new year as well because not every culture celebrates uh, Christmas as we know it exactly. with Santa Claus even you don't little Miss Spanish girl uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well here we have the three kings obviously so. which happens in, in January right 6th of January yeah. yes have you, have you noticed uh, Santa Claus um, creeping into the Spanish culture no oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, pff, when I was little, like, there the, was already Santa Claus, but it was sort of like, I don't know, people started doing it at the grandparents' house because then they could play with the toys during Christmas. Because otherwise for us, like, on, on the 7th, you go back to school. Yeah. Well, there's a lot. I think, yeah, it makes sense that way because there's more time to enjoy your your toys and everything. In lots of countries, people are trying to reclaim their version of Christmas because I think every story has a Santa story or some way of, of celebrating Christmas in its own unique way. And we saw some of that today, as you said, with the stalls and, and the information that was on the panels, um, you know, next to those stalls. Uh, I know, for example, in, in Holland, and we're going to talk about the Dutch Christmas in just a moment, uh, there's a huge campaign basically telling Santa Claus to... To, to go away yeah he's not wanted you know it's too American too commercialized and it's not in keeping with the traditions of that country so have, has anything like that happened uh, in Spain and then we kind of fought back or do people not really give a care so much you know mm, no I don't really, well I, I don't know I think in Spain which is like adopting any traditions from any other country to be honest um, especially like the United States or yeah but, um, well, I think we just combine both things. It, does, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, we've lost our tradition, we just do everything. Any yeah. excuse for a party? Well, I think it's like, you know, on Halloween, I can, you know, I don't, I, I, I mean, I, I like Halloween. It's an Irish celebration after all. <laughs> uh, but people see it as a kind of a cultural uh, invasion from the United States. But I think, okay, fair enough. There's probably more of a grounding to dislike Halloween because not every place has a tradition of celebrating a version of it. But when it comes to Christmas, I think a lot of the stories and tales... Uh, are pretty similar, you know, this uh, fatherly figure who comes and brings presents, uh, and even with the uh, with Spain, of course, okay, it's the three wise men, but again, it's the same same device, you know, they come give presents to the good children and to and they give coal or carbon to to the naughty kids, you know. So I think a lot of, when it comes to Christmas, a lot of them have so much in common anyway that it doesn't really matter uh, what you celebrate because it's all in the same spirit. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean. I think, yeah, there are variations of, of Santa Claus and then um, in, in, in three or four countries there are, you know, the, the, the three kings and, well, it's all related to uh, Jesus. Well, every, yeah, every country has three kings. Even in Ireland, uh, they're there at the nativity scene, but they don't play any major part in the uh, Christmas story. Uh, but in Lithuania, I read that the three kings play a huge part. I mean, a, a role similar to the role they play in Spain that they are the gift bearers um, in Lithuania for children there. So it's not just in Spain that they play such a predominant role in, in the narrative. Do you know the names of the three wise men? Sure, as a Spanish girl, uh, surely you do. Well, of course, in Spanish or in English. Uh, surprise me. 
a Lithuanian. No, Gaspar, Melchor uh, y Baltasar. Exactly. I think there's going to be... Who's the, who, who is the black guy in, the, in that tree? Baltasar. Yeah, I think there's going to be... Uh, first time there's going to be a black Baltasar in, in Madrid. Yeah, year. that's very true. Yeah, yeah about time, because it really is quite shocking. Questions were being raised, I think. Yeah, sure. I mean... Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what they all brought as well? They brought um, gold, well, obviously. Yeah, and frankincense uh, and, and, and myrrh. myrrh. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. uh, do you know what these things are? Yeah, they're like spices from um, the east, let's <laughs> say. <laughs> okay. From the uh, Orient. <laughs> oriental spices, yeah, yeah indeed. Oriental spices. Uh, well, I did some research into this uh, a while ago. You might remember, mm-hmm. this is all the way back in October. Because I just couldn't wait for Christmas. Uh, so, uh, the myrrh uh, has a lot of medicinal properties. It can be used in toothpaste, fighting cancer, fighting depression. Um, it can be used in electrical goods as well. Uh, it's used in soap. It's used in perfume. Uh, and frankincense is quite similar as well. It has a lot of kind of applications, but myrrh has the most, you know. Mm-hmm. And of course, gold is something that we use to buy pretty things. So, uh, so there's a little bit of interesting things because these are real things that were used in in old religions as well, and, and in Judaism yeah. as as um, you know, it had a special significance in ceremonies and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, as well, uh, there's a bit of foreshadowing. We, met, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, frankincense or myrrh, I can't remember which, is used in debt rituals, and uh, people, some people argue, theologians argue that. That, um, because it was presented to the infant Jesus, mm-hmm. it was foreshadowing his eventual death. Because that was always God's plan that he was going to give his life for for the world. You know, so uh, you know the writers of the Bible they knew how to write a good plot device. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, so speaking specifically about this international fair, uh, so what countries were represented in in this uh, event? There were countries all over the world. I was quite surprised at uh, how varied it was. Um, yeah, f- Philippines, uh, Eastern European countries, yeah. uh, African countries, Ireland as well. Got to look in, <laughs> uh, which I was quite Asian happy about. countries. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you bought a uh, you bought some postcards from. I from did who? buy some postcards from uh, the Lithuanian store. The Lithuanian store everywhere in this podcast. Uh, <laughs> so what did you? Well, why? What? What caught your eye when it came to that? I don't know. I just like them because um, the. I don't know, they were like paper cutouts, like forming silhouettes. Yeah. And one thing I really liked was that as we were uh, walking around, we were chatting to some of the people that were manning stalls. And, and most of them were like, you know, <laughs> I was going to say real people from that country. But, but well, it is true that like they were natives of that country. And uh, some of them, you know, look like they they come specifically for this. Um and well they were just explaining and a lot of the things that they were selling were made by by themselves like for example the postcards were made by a woman who was sitting there and and the girl that was selling them to me was sort of translating yeah um about them okay yeah that's true you had that access to the culture which is the whole point of this kind of venture yeah you want something real because many times what you get in these sort of things is sort of like i mean i've seen it when i've been abroad and i've seen spanish things and it's sort of like uh, you know, like a cartoonish representation yeah. of the country. So, well, well, I mean, these people live here, which is why I think we're seeing the real culture. Because uh, we went to the Polish stall, as the Polish uh, stall. I never knew there's a Polish restaurant in Etocha, Um because you know I've been to a lot of uh, ethnic restaurants in Madrid, but I never knew there's a Polish one here. And again, it's just really nice just to see what they had there. You just take a look at the stall; you can see all the chocolates, yeah. the kind of mixture of fruit and, and sweet things. They were all very pleasant as well. Yeah. I mean, and there were lots of food to, to try that yeah. you could try before you were. Uh, exactly, and we got some nice green tea from uh, from the Japanese stall yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Japanese they don't seem to celebrate Christmas. New Year is is more their thing. Uh, the Filipinos we we saw as well. They have a special mass between the 16th and the 24th. Uh, like when, a midnight mass yeah, for like the, the ex- week before Christmas. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, in our culture, who represented there, uh, it was under Ukraine. in Ukraine. They celebrated Christmas by uh, waking up very early and singing songs celebrating the return of the sun. Uh, some kind of significance uh, in their kind of view of the world or whatever. Um, is there anything that kind of struck your mind uh, when it came to um, ways of celebrating or marking Christmas? Um, oh, well, you don't you the Irish for Christmas, didn't you? Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes, but I'm not sure I could repeat it now. Say, <laughs> uh, no, say no le cona. Okay, no le cona. 
Beautiful. <laughs> and do you notice anything from uh, from the stall? I was quite surprised <laughs> by the mention of a uh, women's Christmas in Ireland. In Ireland, yeah. Well, yeah. It's so I really, I really wanted to know what it was, but then I got the impression from what you said that uh, nothing really, nothing really happened. Uh, we don't really mark it. No, yeah. uh, it's considered the end of Christmas for mm -hmm. us, uh, so it's like the last day of Christmas. You know, it'd be nice to your mother, I suppose, uh, <laughs> or your sister. Only uh, that day. But um, but yes, it. But it's just one of those old things that we still. I mean, we have other days. I'm sure most countries have these days. We have Saint Bridget's Day, which is in February as well. It's just a a religious day that there's no special holiday attached to it, but it's something that we yeah, are I still just aware find it of. peculiar because yeah. normally, even in religious festivities, don't really celebrate, let's say, or focus on women. That's what I, I found yeah. curious. Even just if it's the name. Um, that's true. I haven't uh, looked into it uh, why 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 it's there. So you know, if you feel bored at home, by all means, you know, Google it. Um, okay, so for example, let us know. And, and, and uh, I don't care. Uh, so <laughs> don't, 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 don't don't bother about that. Um, but speaking of Ireland, we do of course have Saint Stephen's Day on the twenty sixth, uh, which in the United Kingdom is called Boxing Day. Um, in Spain, I don't know if there's any. Uh, particular day in 26 in Holland yeah. for example I do know that 26 is an, an important celebration as well uh, but I think it's and in America uh, and other it is very you know limited countries yeah. 26 we have something on the 28th on okay. the 28th like we've got like the innocent day basically. ah yes I remember of course innocent yeah. day like it's it, meant to be like the, the kids that day. yeah it's the equivalent but it, it's about the, the babies that were killed by Herod okay um, uh, that's why they call the innocent saints, you know. Ah, okay, interesting. Because they were killed yeah. when they were very well, little. Do you know what happens on the twenty sixth in Ireland? Um, yeah, it's St. Stephen's Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, well, basically, uh, boys dress up as wrens, uh, little birds, and uh, back in the past, it was uh, seen as a. Uh, you know the bird was was hunted, uh, but it's not hunted anymore. And and these boys dress as wrens. They go around to different houses, knock on the door, sing a few songs, and try to get some money. And then the money goes to charity or whatever. And the story behind it is that uh, there was this old witch who was uh, basically tempting men, you know, kind of like entrapping them and then killing them. And then she she changed into a wren and flew away. And that's where the wren became a symbol became a symbol of something kind of evil and not to be uh, not to be trusted. How is that related to St. Stephen's? Because St. Stephen's Day, well, St. Stephen was uh, one of the saints, well, it was around at the time. But St. Stephen uh, had an interaction with the, he's, he's a character in this narrative as well, in this story, okay. and he was kind of involved in uh, her demise, you know, so St. Stephen's Day, uh, he, he kind of celebrated in this day. But St. Stephen was, was one of the first saints uh, to, if not the first saint, to be canonized by the church. So uh, he has that in his fame. Uh, as well, uh, and then with Santa Claus, uh, we didn't see any Dutch stalls. Uh, no, with Santa Claus, yeah, it's, it's strange because Santa Claus is a big thing, and I've celebrated it a couple of times as well. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, a few other festivals. You, uh, you, um, you know, Santa Claus is, is a Dutch Santa Claus. He's not. He's not Santa Claus. He's a Dutch one, <laughs> and he, he lives in Spain, and he comes to Holland oh, yeah. uh, every year on December fifth. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a Santa Claus TV, like a reporter, kind of um, reporting on his movements. He's come, he's come, he comes by boat, by the canals. Everybody uh, applauds and cheers him and waits for him. And the whole idea is that uh, he comes with his helper, who uh, very often has been dressed in blackface for the last few years, since kind of racist undertones, but they're changing to multicolored ones now, <laughs> uh, just to make it less kind of controversial. And then uh, children leave. Uh, uh, letters and uh, letters and shoes and with poems for other people and Santa Claus comes and gives them presents and everything and then you can have parties and celebrations uh, with other people where you you bring food you write a poem about the person's like Secret Santa uh, and you write a poem gently poking fun at that person and it's mm -hmm. kind of like a, a big celebration so that's kind of how they celebrate Christmas in different countries uh, join us in just a moment for part two
Welcome back to part two of the show. How are you feeling, Maria? Very festive. Me too. So uh, <laughs> this is our last show before Christmas. Uh, so I wish I wish to wish you a uh, Kona, Feliz Navidad, Christmas in all the languages, and I hope you have a happy and safe holidays. You come back to our podcast refreshed, relaxed, and happy. Uh, yeah, have a happy Christmas, and uh, we'll hear you or you'll hear us in January. Bye bye. You're listening to Soap Sound Radio. We bring you streaming and live broadcasting from the capital. This is the Alarpa Podcast.